Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome to this Steinberg Hellion 7 tutorial series. Over the course of this series, we are going to deconstruct the Everest of VST plugins. Hellion 7 is ridiculously vast and it's going to take some while to get to grips with, but we will get there and we're going to have at our fingertips, I think the most powerful plugin in existence. I don't think there's anything to touch Hellion 7 and I am a huge, a huge fan of some of the other really vast monster programs out there. I think this is at the top of the tree. Today we're going to have a really basic overview of what Hallion is because it's so many different things it's really easy to get overwhelmed. So a nice gentle introduction today. I'm just going to show you around a few sounds and have a look at a few of the features under the hood. The thing I'm going to start with is by heading into my media bay. This is Hallion's own media bay, not to be confused with the one hosted in Cubase. And I'm going to head to the HS factory. See this little symbol up at the top? If you left click that, it'll toggle between a text based view and an icon based view. I'm going to drill into the HS factory options and I'm going to load three oscillator lead. This is a nice simple subtractive analog sound to get us up and running. Hellion sounds are stored in programs and we have a program tree in which we can see how this sound is constructed. Uh, the tree has branches and we can open those branches and we can see that's basically the entire program. Some programs are absolutely vast and would take you many pages to scroll through. This is a nice simple one. So this subtractive synthesizer is based on a synth zone and here in the program tree is our synth zone. I'm going to click it and now I've selected that zone for editing. In the center of Hallion, probably the single most important editor of all is the zone editor. You're going to spend a lot of your time here because this is, this is where you configure the primary features of your sound. And if we scroll down through this page, you can see just in this one editor, an awful lot of information. Here you can see the oscillators. So this sound is primarily based on two triangle oscillators and one sine wave sub oscillator they combine together to make that composite sound. You can also see that we have some effects. We have a multi-delay here. So if I single click that multi-delay and then head over to a different editor, I'm gonna choose the sound editor. Here are the settings for our multi-delay. We'll be able to configure that. And so as we wander around different nodes of this program tree, we have the option to select various features. So here's for instance is our reverb and then do some editing over here. Lots of different ways to view all of this data. We can see how the keys of the MIDI keyboard are mapped to the individual zones. This is a very simple zone with a simple mapping. But as we wander around all of these different editors, you can see various pieces of information. There are in total 26 different editors inside Hallion. And in my standard template, which you can see here, I have 24 of them configured. The two editors I don't have configured are the ones for designing macros, which we'll talk about a little bit later, and uh, library creation. So basically the two aspects of Hallion that allow you to, to develop fully commercial products in your own right using the Hallion engine. I don't do that. I use Hallion as a musical instrument. I use the features that other developers give to me. So those 24 editors that I do employ are based in my standard template and you can have different templates configured. You can see Anthony Standard is my basic view. This is what I want Hallion to look like when I'm using it. And in the next episode, I'll show you how to configure this screen set and how you can basically configure all of these different views exactly to your liking. Let's load another program. I'm gonna head back over to my load tab and in my media bay this time, I'm going to choose Anima. Now Anima is a wavetable based macro. So Wavetable is a kind of synthesis. I'm going to show you a little bit under the hood in a moment. But a macro is an important concept that we need to consider. Hallion has the capacity to wrap areas of functionality underneath a skin called a macro, which basically presents a new user interface, an overlaid user interface. It's entirely optional. That previous sound that we had, the three oscillator lead, it doesn't have a macro. In fact, if we have a look at the macro tab, it's empty. You don't have to have one of these things, but if you load a preset that is based on a macro, you're going to get an additional layer of functionality on top. 
So let's load one of these uh, presets. And now when I jump over to the macro tab, this is the anima interface, a brand new layer that's been added on top of all of the Halion engine. It's all still there. All of the functionality for Halion is still under the hood, but now we have this new skin allowing us to interact with this wavetable based sound. Now I'm gonna press a key on my keyboard. So that's what this preset sounds like. And this thing is the wavetable. If I increase the speed, you'll see basically a line go through this table and you'll hear the sound morph as this kind of playhead strobes through this wavetable. Wavetables are really cool and we'll figure out how to use them in this tutorial series. But this is the anima skin, the macro that sits over the top of wavetable based sounds. Let's have a quick peek under the hood, see what this thing looks like behind the scenes. In our program tree, here is the anima layer. These um, little sandwich shaped icons are called layers and they're used for grouping together areas of functionality. So when signals are flowing through Halion, they flow top down. So your instruction from the MIDI keyboard comes into the top of the program and it flows through this tree, entering any number of layers in turn. The next preset I show you will have multiple layers, but basically that's what this is. It's just an area of functionality that comprises this wavetable based synthesizer. Inside the layer, we have the wavetable zone. See, there's a different symbol indicating that this is primarily a wavetable based sound. And now when we jump over to the edit page, screens that were previously blank on our, on our first preset, when we had to look at that um, three oscillator lead sound, there was nothing interesting to see in the wavetable page. But because this is a wavetable based sound, here's our wavetable. This is how the thing is built. This is what the, the sound fundamentally is. When we jump over to our zone tab, we're going to get different information in this zone tab. It's now going to be contextual to a wavetable based sound. So Halion is all about context. What kind of synthesis engine are you, are you employing here? What options do you need in order to be able to interact with that thing? And then optionally, do you have a macro over the top giving you uh, an interface, a user interface that's specifically tailored to interact with that kind of sound source. Speaking of the different synthesis types, there are seven of them. Click this little zone type button up at the top left-hand corner of this window. And there you can see that this is a wavetable zone, wavetable synthesizer type. The previous one that we looked at, uh, the subtractive synthesis is this synth option. And you can see five others. Again, over the course of this series, we'll deal with each one of these in great detail and figure out how all of that works. Let's load our third sound. I'm gonna jump back over to my media bay. And this time I'm gonna search by name because the good old familiar hexagon preset that's been Halion's default uh, preset of choice for years. We're gonna load that. Let's have a quick listen to it before we go any further. So that's what hexagon sounds like. Obviously an awful lot going on there. Let's have a look at the program tree. So this time we have three layers. We have an animal layer, just like we did in the last preset. Let's have a look at it. Different zone, different sound, different kind of wavetable, but fundamentally it is a wavetable based sound. And in fact, if I select right up at the top of the program tree, and jump over to the macro page, you can see an anima interface. This is a really important point to note about the user interface. Everything is top down. Halion scans through the program tree, looking for the first thing that makes any sense in the context that you're currently examining. So if we're looking at the macro tree, it's gonna go through each one of these nodes until it comes across something that is a macro. And since anima is the first layer in this program, that's what you get. But there are other macros inside this program. If I select this second layer called Skylab, now the macro view updates. Skylab is a sample-based 
synthesizer macro. So it's a skin that's designed specifically for dealing with, well, not just sample-based synthesis um, engine types. It's actually a granular synthesizer as well. Granular synthesis is a weird hybrid beast, but, but fundamentally it's based on samples. And that's what we've got here. Underneath the Skylab layer, we have a third layer called Studio Strings. And if I single click that, now you can see the Studio Strings macro, which is clearly going to be based on some sort of acoustic instrument. Let's have a listen to each one of those three layers in turn. I'm going to solo just the Anima layer. And you can see that everything that's needed to get that sound to the outside world has remained unmuted. So the program bus, where all of these layers get rooted to, is still enabled and anima on its own. So that's where the sequence sound is coming from. Something inside that anima preset is generating this popping sound, this sequence. Let's turn that off and have a listen to Skylab. What does that sound like? So it's quite quiet, but this is our otherworldly pad sound. And finally, the studio strings sounds like this. And the hexagon program is a combination of all three of those layers together. Disable solo. Now you can hear that pad the sequence, the anima sequence over the top, and then the otherworldly tinkling stuff coming from Skylab all mixed together to make that one composite sound that we know as the hexagon preset. Let's just have a look at one last thing before we call it a day today. I'm going to solo the anima layer again, and I'm going to select this feature called Flex Fraser. I head into my Edit tab and choose my Sound tab. Flex Fraser is Hallian's own sequencing engine, and this is the sequence. So I can change the pitch of the notes. velocities. I've just built myself a brand new sequence. Obviously we're going to cover all of this stuff in great detail in later episodes but that'll do us for our general introduction. Hope you enjoyed the episode and please hit like if you did. I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.